Hi, in this video we're going to look at one more formal law, the Data Protection Act, and also talk about how regulators can be involved in classification and certification of digital media products. So that act I mentioned, the Data Protection Act, which was last introduced in 2018, we often write the date after a law, it's not really worth remembering the date, it's not as important as the name of the law. We write the year because there are different versions of laws. The previous version of this law was back in 1998, so that old version is a bit different to the new version. And this whole law is designed to protect personal data from misuse. And the DPA is the UK's version of the European Union law, the GDPR, which you may well have heard of. It's why suddenly on websites a few years ago you got loads of messages asking for your consent and asking about cookies and if you accepted the cookies and so on. That is all linked to the GDPR, which is called the Data Protection Act in the UK. And just in terms of what personal data actually is, so it's information which can be used to identify a person. Various things about you are not very, would not be classed as personal data, like your hair color, how many dogs you have, things which can't really be used to identify you, but something like your date of birth or your fingerprint or your bank account details are clearly personal bits of data. And this law is especially careful about what it considers to be particularly sensitive data. So data related to things like your health, your medical records, your beliefs, so political or religious, your ethnicity, your sexual orientation, and so on. So things which are really core to who we are and we definitely don't want to be shared at all. Whereas your name is personal data, but I don't think any of us mind our name being shared to the same extent as say our medical records. Okay, so under the law, individuals who are accessing our website or dealing with our product in some way must be informed if we are going to use their personal data in our product. So it's why you have all of those accept messages. It's very similar to those release forms we were talking about a minute or two ago. You have to tell the person you are going to use their data and also what you are going to use it for. And also the person, once it has been collected, can also request access to see what data an organization stores about them. So if you wanted to contact Facebook or YouTube to find out what data they have on you, they would have to legally provide that data to you. And individuals are allowed to ask to have the data deleted, updated or moved and you have to comply with this. You can't say you're going to delete it and not actually delete it, otherwise that would be quite serious. Typically the punishment for not adhering to this law is a large fine and it can be millions of pounds in some cases. Often it comes from data being released in a cyber attack, so a, a hacker has managed to get access to personal data and so it's really important as a business, you have enough security to protect against anyone stealing the personal data. All right, the final thing to look at in this very content heavy video is regulation. Because along with our general laws we've talked about, many media products are regulated by an organization specific to that industry. So it's almost like a sort of, uh, almost like a police agency just applied to that industry, but not quite as powerful, I suppose. So Ofcom is regulating all communications really, so radio, TV, and more. The ASA, Advertising Standards Authority, is for adverts. Occasionally you may hear about a ruling, often if something, if a controversial advert appears, both agencies will get inundated with complaints. So they are, they are not belonging directly to the government always, Ofcom is, ASA isn't but the government at least delegates some responsibility to them to regulate a particular industry. And one of the many roles the different regulators have is classification. So this is usually applied to, or at least we care about, how it is applied regarding suitability for children. So trying to figure out what adverts are suitable to be shown on kids TV, what films are suitable to be shown during the day, maybe. The regulator which does this for films, at least in the UK, is the BBFC, the British Board of Film Classifications, and it will give out certificates based on the age rating they believe applies to that film, right? So if you go to a film and it's really, really violent and it's got loads of bad language and it's quite controversial, likely it'll be an 18. And so if you turn up and you're 16, you may well not be allowed to watch the film in a cinema. And the idea of a regulator doing this as opposed to the people who make the film is to make it more neutral. Clearly if you are a filmmaker you might want everyone to see your film and so you might give it a U rating even if it is quite violent and it could affect young children who might watch it. For video games it's a similar system but done by a different organisation, so in this case PEGI, Pan European Game Information it stands for. So very similar ratings except they don't quite match up exactly. They also, what PEGI do is often go into a bit more detail on boxes, so saying exactly why maybe a, a game is at 18, maybe it's got violence and maybe it's got some 
reference to drugs, which might make it more severe than the 16, say. Again, the people who are making the video games don't decide what rating it should get is done by a neutral third party, in this case a regulator. And like for films, the video game designers are not deciding these ratings, right? They might have a target audience of 16 and above, but ultimately if Peggy decides it's too violent, they can't really, there's not much they can do about it. And the last thing for this video is just to be clear on the difference between classification and certification. Classification is about generally putting different media into different categories. So in this case, putting films into different age groups for adverts, it might be in terms of the actual products they are advertising, like gambling, like food, sport, etc., etc. And certification is some formal awarding of a certificate based on a category. So really anyone can do classification, but only a approved regulator can actually give a certificate based on that classification.